How do you do? We all face obstacles in our work. Sometimes there are external barriers between cultures, or maybe from a lack of resources. And sometimes the obstacles are more internal. We battle our own fears and doubts. Today we meet someone who faced innumerable challenges that might have discouraged her from the work God had called her to do. But she was able to persevere when her heart and mind and life were unshackled. They burned down Carter's Mill. The Union soldiers are headed this way. Carter's Mill is only a mile north. That's what I'm saying. All right, I'll gather the food. Ori, you pack up some clothing. Yes, Mother. Lottie? Yes? Gather the jewels and silver. Take Eddie with you. Where should I take it? I don't know. Well, I'd bury it somewhere. Let's go, Ori. Here, Eddie, I'm going to put some in your skirt. Why do we have to hide our folks? So the soldiers don't run off with them. We need these for our parties. We need these because they're worth something. And now that we've lost the war, everything's about to change. But I don't want everything to... Let's get them to the orchard. The ground's just been plowed, so we won't leave any marks. Look at the smoke! Oh, from the mill, no doubt. Follow me, Eddie. I'll keep us safe. This is Unshackled. Dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Chicago is beloved for its lakefront natural beauty, wealth of culture, and warm Midwestern spirit. But it is also home to an enormous homeless population. Many of those homeless find their way to Pacific Garden Mission, which has been serving the destitute since 1877, making us the oldest continuously operating rescue mission in the country. Every day, hundreds of men, women, and children of all ages and backgrounds seek help, shelter, food, and hope. This gives us an opportunity to introduce people to the love of God and the hope we have in Him, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3509 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The woman in our story grew up in a time when it was challenging to be a woman, a leader, and a Christian. This is the story of her journey towards embracing her God-given gifts and calling. Based on YWAM's Christian Heroes Then and Now series by Janet and Jeff Benj, we bring you part one of the true testimony of Lottie Moon, right now on Unshackled. My first home was a comfortable one. Viewmont was one of the largest plantations in Virginia, and it belonged to my parents. My great-grandfather was a friend of Thomas Jefferson's, and Jefferson's homestead, Monticello, now belonged to my uncle. Our family had an established and prominent role in Southern society, so it was a surprise when I learned about my uncle's career change. Can you keep a secret? Yes. You told on me last Sunday when I read Evelina on the Sabbath. Well, it wasn't fair. I didn't know we could read on the Sabbath. You also told everyone at church that Mother was pregnant again when only the family was supposed to know. Well, I was excited. Well, never mind. I just realized how terrible you are at keeping secrets. I'll finish shelling all the peas by myself if you tell me. You know how Cousin Sarah and Uncle James and their whole family left to go join that new weird church? Yeah, the disciples of... Yeah, well, now they're moving to Jerusalem to go tell people about God. What? To tell what people about God? I don't know. People who live in Jerusalem. Is Sarah mad? No, she's excited. But Uncle James wanted to tell Mom first, so that's why it's a secret. We're not supposed to know. But, but, but that doesn't make any sense. Uncle James is so smart, and, and Sarah's so fun. And I don't know why they would... Well, what a waste of a life. I know. It's really sad. Where are you going? You said you'd finish the peas if I told you. Uh. That was the deal. <laughs> I enjoyed school and had a strong preference for words over numbers. I admired my sister Ori, who went off to Troy Female Seminary, where she learned from some of the leaders in the new women's rights movement. I was the oldest child left at home with mother and the girls, including the newest addition to our family, two-month-old Robinette. One week after my father had left on a business trip, we received a letter in the mail. No! Mother, what is it? <gasps> A fire on the steamboat? Daddy? Oh, no. 
It seems the passengers were jumping off and he tried to take his chest of gold with him. It says he made it ashore, but they couldn't rouse him. Why did he go for the gold? Why didn't he just jump in and swim? I don't know. Lottie, what will we do? My mother was never the same after my father's death. She changed my baby sister's name from Robinette to Edmonia after my father, Edward. His will indicated that he had made arrangements for all of his children, including the girls, to have as much education as we wanted. This was unusual in Southern culture at the time, and I was grateful my father had made it possible for me to go to college. I began my schooling at the Hollands Institute. I loved exchanging letters with my sister, Ori, about our experiences at school. Dear Lottie, the Pennsylvania Female Medical School is quite young still, and in fact, no woman has finished her degree. I intend to be the first Southern woman to graduate as a doctor. There is much opposition to women working in this profession, but my professors are working hard to change things for us. They say we should be treated as equally as men in the profession, and even at the voting booth. Back in Viewmont for the summer, Ori and I skipped church to continue reading and discussing the plight of women's rights in America. Back at school, I received the news that my older brother Tom had contracted cholera while working as a doctor and died at the age of 23. My sorrow drove me deeper into my studies, and when I finished, my Latin, English, and French grades were among the best in the class. And so it is my great privilege, as your headmaster, to stand before the women of the Hollands Institute mm -hmm. and congratulate you on the day of your graduation. <laughs> you are now educated women with the ability to converse intelligently about matters of the day. Mm -hmm. But it is good to remember the proper role you play in our society, that of a wife, mother, and quiet but pious member of your local church. I wondered what Ori would think of this speech. We agreed that the headmaster had no idea what the Moon Sisters were capable of. So, while many of my fellow students were engaged in preparing for a family life, I was eager to continue my education. Back home at Viewmont, my mother suggested that I take on the task of teaching my little sister, Eddie. How do we say music in Greek? Musiki! <laughs> Very good. Now, what will we do to welcome Ori when she comes home? Musiki! 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 <laughs> hey, welcome home! Hello! Can you say Dr. Ori? Yes, <laughs> That's close enough. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Doctor. In name only, I'm afraid. What do you mean? Last I checked, you were one of only two licensed female doctors in the entire South. And I'm wholly unemployed. No hospital will consider hiring a woman. What? Ori, welcome home, dear. Merry Christmas. Eddie and Lottie, I am going to need my pots and pans back. Musiki! Ori's struggles made me all the more committed to the women's rights movement. And to my surprise, the Baptist Church was paving a path for women's education. The Charlottesville Baptist Church started the Albemarle Female Institute with the idea their young women would take all the same courses the men were taking at the University of Virginia. This was a scandalous idea that caused great controversy. <laughs> of course, I enrolled. Unfortunately, I thought then, church was part of the curriculum. Oh, none of my stockings are clean. Well, you could borrow some of mine. You come to church, Lottie? No, thank you. What do you mean, no, thank you? I'd rather read Twelfth Night. You think you're just gonna lay here and on the haystack and read Shakespeare while we all go to church? Come off it. Let's go. No, I'm not going. Lottie D. Moon. You know what the D stands for? What? Devil. Serious? <sighs> come on, Tara. We gotta go. Aside from the way I ridiculed their religious beliefs, I made quick friends at school. When my sister Ori decided to travel the world, I was tempted to join. But I loved learning and was top of my class, so I stayed at Albemarle. Right around my 18th birthday, the Reverend organized some evangelical meetings at the church. 
I went just so I could gather ammunition to keep making fun of my friends for their silly beliefs. We read in Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's pretty radical, isn't it? Jesus came to unite us, not to divide. For we are all made in the image of God. Therefore, every human being, no matter who they are, is of value and is outrageously loved by God. We live in a time where human beings are owned by other human beings, where women are not given equal opportunity in some ways. But God beckons us to another way. In Him, we are all one and part of the body of Christ. I thought I would come back to my dormitory armed with arguments and able to poke holes in everything that was said. Instead, I lay in bed quietly, reminding myself why I wasn't a Christian. I had grown up listening to adults argue over the differences between denominations. It seemed so silly. But here, Reverend Brodus was talking about unity in Christ. Had I given up on an entire way of being simply because I had heard people argue about it? So tonight, I'll ask for anyone who wants to be made new by joining Christ's family to come forward. Is that Lottie Moon? Well, I've been praying she would come. She's Jesus just here to stir up trouble. She thinks she's too smart Anyone for all this. Who would like to become a Christian? To know personally our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can come forward now to the altar. It would be my great privilege to pray with you. No way! I told you. Hi, Lottie. I, I would like to... I would like to know God. News spread quickly. Lottie Moon, Queen of the Skeptics, has said yes to Jesus. Pat, this would be a good time to ask that man you fancy to dinner. The whole world's upside down. <laughs> Anything could happen. It was arranged for me to be baptized. And before long, I was running Bible studies, prayer meetings, and Sunday school. When I returned to Viewmont for the summer, I was excited to see Ori fresh off her travels, but nervous about what I had to share. Me too. What? I became a Christian too. In Jerusalem, Uncle James baptized me. Oh, that's wonderful. I found a sense of purpose I didn't have when I left. I feel God is calling me to serve in the war. People are dying. They're going to need doctors. Well, maybe I can help you. Except, I'm not good with blood. Or sick people. Or injuries. <laughs> well, maybe you can help with the paperwork. The Civil War dragged on. As things drew to a close, the Union Army came through Virginia, looting. We hid our silverware in the orchard. It stayed safe, but when we lost the war, Mother lost most everything else. She had never been quite the same after Father died, and eventually she decided life was no longer worth living. My mother died in 1870. Hello, Lottie. Reverend Brodus here. I'm writing because my colleague in Kentucky is looking to set up a women's academy and wondered if I could recommend an instructor. Of course, I thought of you. I don't know if it'd be at all the kind of thing you'd be interested in, but... You must be Anna. I am, and you are the infamous head teacher of history, grammar, and literature, Lottie Moon. <laughs> That's kind of you. I do teach those things. Please tell me you've a head for numbers. Mathematics and astronomy are the best subject. Oh, bless you. Can I help you set up? Yeah, I'm just unpacking the books here. 
How did you find your way here? My old reverend wrote to me and said they were looking for a professor. How nice. I'm a Christian as well, in fact. Presbyterian. Well, I'm a Baptist, <laughs> but we can still be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to not be doing this alone. Yes, well, the war left my family rather destitute. I had to find work. My story's quite similar. Someday I dream of doing the Lord's work overseas. But for now, I'll take any paycheck I can get. Hmm, you don't say. A secret dream of doing missionary work had been growing in me as well. But my church would never send a single woman overseas. In Anna, I found a kindred spirit. So when I received a surprising letter from my little sister, Eddie, I ran to share it with Anna. Dearest Lottie, I hope all is well at your school. You'll never believe where I'm headed. China, I'm going to be a missionary. Who would have thought? We'll continue with Lottie's story in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. I'd like to take a moment to update you on our ministry here at Pacific Garden Mission. We go beyond providing care for immediate needs like food and shelter. We hope that everyone who enters our doors will come to know the transforming love and power of Jesus. Many come to know him and some choose to join our one-year-long resident Bible programs, which include a career development phase. As we prepare our participants to re-enter the workforce, we could use your help. The career development sessions have a biblical foundation and span relevant topics such as resume preparation, interview skills, and job search opportunities. Maybe you are an employer and might be in the position to help connect our graduates to work opportunities. Or perhaps you are in a position to give of your time, talent, testimony, or financial resources. Send your gift or write a check to Pacific Garden Mission. 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607, or call 312-429-6700 to discuss further opportunities to partner with our career development program. Thank you for your time and for remembering the homeless men, women, and children at Pacific Garden Mission. Tarleton and Martha Crawford had gone out as missionaries to China. My sister Eddie wrote to them and asked for a letter of invitation. She then assailed the Foreign Mission Board for permission to go and serve. Of course, Anna and I conclude that if Eddie could go, we could go too. Of course, the hardest part of this decision is leaving you girls and your families and the entire Cartersville school community. Anna and I have so loved our time here. We are happy to answer any questions you uh, have. Yeah, I got a question. With all due respect... I do not understand why two young women like yourselves would waste your talents on these... Well, I've read about them. Now, these are heathen people on the other side of the world, and, and there are southern girls right in front of you who need an education. Now, what you got to say about that? Yes. Um, Lottie, do you want to take that one? Many people didn't understand what we were doing. But the women of the First Baptist Church banded together to provide financial and moral support. And I found strength from my family as well. Could a Christian woman possibly desire a higher honor than to be permitted to go from house to house and tell of a Savior to those who have never heard his name? You sent that letter to all the Southern Baptist churches? You bet I did. I'm so proud of you. I can't wait till I see you next and you can tell me all your stories. Though Anna and I were headed to different parts of China, I knew I was more fortunate than most missionaries. I had a blood relative waiting for my arrival. I boarded a train to San Francisco, and from there, we set sail for Shanghai. Tarleton and Martha Crawford were waiting to welcome me. I know you're eager to see your sister, but she's in Tang Chao overseeing our building expansion. We're adding a tower for you and Eddie to share. How wonderful. You must be exhausted. <gasps> What is that beautiful smell? Jasmine, orange blossom, follow us. A and what is that man selling? Fruits and vegetables. I guess they don't have those kinds back home, do they? I is Teng Chow much like Shanghai? Shanghai is much more tolerant of Western ideas. Anyone can practice Christianity freely here, but in Teng Chow, last week, 
Well, a group of men followed your sister and I around, threatening to chop off our heads. Oh. Well, how is Eddie coping with encounters like that? Edmonia's doing fine. For the most part. I'll never forget my first glimpse of the magnificent city of Teng Chao. It was 2,000 years old. Across the top of the skyline, I could make out the spire of the church. Eddie and I caught up over tea. You look well. So do you. A bit thinner, though. Yes, well, we're working hard here. <coughs> <coughs> well, now I've told you all about the family, I want to know more about you. There's not much more to say about Teng Chao. No, tell me about you. How are you, really? It hasn't been easy here. Some things are... a bit of a strain. What things? Like the new tower Tartan is building. The expansion on his home. It's caused a great deal of trouble. The Chinese see tall buildings as an invasion of privacy. They started to riot at his gate. So Tarleton got out his gun. He what? He didn't shoot it, but he aimed it at them, and they fled. Oh, well, I know I'm pretty new at this missionary thing, but it seems to me if you have to use a gun against the Chinese, you're going to have a hard time telling them about God. Soon after my arrival, Martha and Eddie took me to meet Sally Holmes. She and her husband were the first Western missionaries in their city. When Sally was pregnant with her second child, her husband was murdered by a band of robbers. I listened to her story with wide eyes. So I had to make a very difficult decision. Go back to the U.S. or stay at my mission post without a husband and a baby on the way. Oh, I hope I can be as brave as you. The Lord will give you a strength you've never known. Eddie has done so well learning Mandarin. Oh, Thank you. She took over the boys' grade school within a year's time. Oh, I can't wait to visit. I have so much to learn. I know Eddie will soon be busy with teaching again, and I with the medical clinic. Sally, if you were willing, I thought perhaps you could mentor Lottie in reaching Chinese women with the gospel. I would be delighted. I've been praying for a helper for so long. I said about learning Mandarin, which was much more challenging than I anticipated. The languages I already knew were based on Latin, and Mandarin is a tonal language. When Sunday came, it was time to visit the church I had heard so much about. This way, Lottie. That's the men's side. The men's side? That side of the wall is where the men sit. This is where the women listen to the sermon. But there are barely any women here. We should be grateful there are any at all. Chinese women mostly stay inside their compounds. Only a poor woman would run her own errands. I thought being an independent woman in pre-Civil War Virginia was tough. But Chinese women seemed to be much more restricted. Their feet were bound so tightly, many of them struggled to walk. Yet, I tried to understand their traditions before passing judgment. After three weeks, it was time for us to experience life outside the city walls. I couldn't wait to see the work Sally Holmes was doing in the rural communities. How's your donkey feel? <laughs> I suppose I'll get used to it. It's better than the sedan chair, believe it or not. Now, this village is in the rural northwest. I imagine we'll be the first white people many of the Chinese there have ever seen. Well, then at least we'll have a crowd. <laughs> That's the spirit. When we reached the village, a crowd of women gathered. Don't worry. What are they saying? They want to know if you're married and why you traveled so far without your husband. <laughs> well, you can tell them I'm a woman just like them, and I have no husband. And I traveled here because I have some very important news to tell them about a God who loves them. All right, it's time to get organized. Eddie, will you hold the scroll? We taught them a hymn called Happy Land. Everyone picked it up quickly. I loved eating lunch with people of all ages. They marveled at the forks we used to eat. I thought of burying our silver forks in the orchard, of my father dying to save a chest of gold. We pampered southern bells were far from home, but I felt closer to the heart of God than ever before. After some singing and teaching, it was time to head home. Well, I don't know about you ladies, but I am exhausted. <coughs> 
Me too. Are you all right, Eddie? <clears throat> I just need some tea and sleep, I think. So, Lottie, what did you think? What did I think? We four women just presented the gospel to... Well, I mean, that must have been hundreds of people who had never heard it before. I can't wait to do it again. Unfortunately, we would be smaller in number on our next trip. My sister Eddie fell ill with pneumonia. Missionaries were falling apart all around us. The wife of a Presbyterian missionary died, and another suffered a nervous breakdown. Eddie's mind was wearing along with her body. She was easily angered and fought often with Martha's husband, Tarleton. This soup is too cool. Well, you can take care of yourself then. I already am. You ungrateful child. I'm not a child. Well, you're acting like one. Please, get back into bed. It's time for church. No, Eddie. It's, it's Tuesday evening. <laughs> what is that? It's just the construction outside. Help me, Lottie. Please, save me. My sister was not well. It was one of the hardest decisions of my life, but I wrote to the Foreign Mission Board and asked them to bring Edmonia Moon home. It was clear I would have to take her. I did not know if she would make it on her own. Would my sister survive the voyage? Would I ever return to China? Could I do this work without my sister? What would we find of our family when we returned to Virginia? I held my breath as we stepped on the ship and sent up a prayer to the God who had brought me so far already. We'll hear part two of Lottie's story next time on Unshackled.